The Local Show, featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business. Right here in Central New York, The Local Show is locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now your hosts, Tom and Steve. Welcome in. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. This is the 2024 fall edition of The Local Show. I'm your host, Tom Sakosho Jr., along with my friend and co-host, Steve Roberts. The Local Show features conversations about local businesses. We talk to the business owners, CEOs, CFOs, entrepreneurs, nonprofits, business advocates, and other business-friendly organizations. We learn how they got into business and why they do business right here in Syracuse, New York, and where their businesses might be going in the future. You will hear all about their successes, their chances challenges, opportunities, marketing, and advertising. We are broadcasting from the Zoe Advertising Studios, sponsored by Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts, and you can see us on YouTube, and we encourage you to get on over to YouTube. You can just look up Zoe Advertising, and then you like, and you follow, and then you'll get served up all these uh, little snippets of uh, new businesses and civic organizations and all the people we talk with. We say a hearty, healthy good morning, fall morning, to uh, Steve Roberts. Have you fallen? <laughs> you said anywhere? fall earlier. I'm thinking trip and fall. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, it's kind of pretty out there. When I was out uh, gigging, which seems to be my uh, big pastime, <laughs> Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and uh, we were out there uh, traveling around up in Oswego uh, County and then down into the Finger Lakes and all those areas, and it's beautiful. It really, the leaves changing look beautiful. It, it is. I was up Lake George here in the last week. Were you? And, okay. And, and um, They and let you back in. They did. Statute of limitations <laughs> yeah, run out? They ran yeah, out, okay, and I moved good. in there. Very and nice. and um, it, was, it was beautiful, and it's, uh, but it wasn't as colorful, actually, as down uh, in this area. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, things had started to change, but they weren't peaked. Right, But right. It, is, it is beautiful, and uh, everything's, you know. And the, weather, the weather's been cooperating very nicely. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, and you had a... Yeah, yeah, you've been traveling, doing weddings and yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's lots of stuff uh, going on in that in that realm. Seems like fall, you know, brides want to get married. Yeah, you know, well, they want to beat, beat the winter rush and, and whatnot. <laughs> right. and haven't been. I have not chased the walleyes or the salmon yet. Uh, that's on the list, but there's right. everything seems to take the time. You oh, know, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, you and I have family that. responsibilities and things. Not sure. you and I. We're not a couple. Don't get that wrong. No, but uh, <laughs> you have family. I have family. Oh, we're, we're just... a couple of something. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Hey, we got a great show all racked up for you, though, folks. So we uh, encourage you to stick around for the entire couple of hours that uh, we're on the Redidio. It's Erin uh, Powell up first. She's going to be uh, the owner of J Dog Junk Removal and Hauling. We'll talk with her, and then Dave Knapp stops by, treasurer of the Lafayette Apple Fest. Can't uh, not talk about that this time of year. Uh, Kevin Webb is the owner and founder of KW Fitness. Carol Terry is the sales manager at Mattress Makers. We'll have a nice conversation with her. And then uh, Major Charles Roberts, the uh, guy over there at the Salvation Army. Uh, we're getting ramped up for the holiday season, so I'm sure we'll talk about that. Donna Shane is the owner of Syracuse Dog Fence. And then Steve Landers, owner of CNY Plumbing Solutions. Dr. Mitchell Brody uh, steps by again. He's the president and CEO of Family Care Medical Group. And uh, they have a, a very large medical group that's uh, always expanding so be a nice conversation with him first up aaron powell how are you i'm great thanks how are you guys good you are the co-owner of uh, j dunk uh, j dunk no that's <laughs> j dog I like junk that, yes. <laughs> removal and uh hauling right yes yes I am. good how long have you been in that business just about four and a half years now yeah what'd yeah. you do before that i was actually in um I was a college recruit, recruiter. Sorry no for yeah. I actually really loved my job before. Um, I worked as a recruiter to talk to high school students about going into the trades, right? So becoming okay. a welder or diesel mechanic. Yeah, which um, is very hot hands now. Very, on very job. Hot. Yeah. It is. It is definitely. We need more. Wow. And what, sure. what college did you work for? I worked for Lincoln Technical Institute. Okay. Yep, they're out of Connecticut. Well, there's a lot of locations, but that's the main one that I'd worked for. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, and you had to go. Yeah, it's fun to talk to the. You know, you see all the bright eyed stars you know high school students that are like wanting to do something definitely, definitely. yeah that's no. cool so then you transitioned over you got married and you know you were you married at that time too I was, I was yeah, okay. married at that time <laughs> yes um yep no we had um you know purchased the business which is a franchise mm -hmm. um so we are a national company gotcha um and business got very busy and i was able to actually um step away from that kind of corporate job mm -hmm. um to do actually 
kind of, I'm on the truck some days as far as, you know, going and actually doing the junk removal and hauling and right. estate cleaning out and all that hard work. Um, but it allows me now to do a lot of donations. I can look into companies, I can look into um, different organizations that need things, mm -hmm. and I'm able to make those connections so that I can be the donator. Because it's not um, all, always oh, junk. Correct, a lot of times we're no. taking items that are reusable, donatable. Yeah. Some people's um, junk is another man's treasure. Oh, absolutely, right? <laughs> absolutely. You know, part of what we do is keep 60 to 80% of all items that we pick up yeah. out of the actual landfill. Okay. Right, rather it's like, scrap metal that we have to bring back or recyclables that we bring back or donatable items. Um, that's kind of a big deal when you think about it. There's a lot of right. issues with landfills and just trash probably, in general. Probably not a lot of other companies think of it that way. They probably just throw stuff yeah. away. Yeah. Like when you see those pods all over everybody's property, right? Sure, they're, sure. they're just filling them up and getting them out. No, yeah. Nobody's re-donating. Right, and if someone has stuff, you know, it. Uh, the, 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 even the name might be a little bit of a misleading thing it doesn't have to be junk but it has to be removed correct yeah. so if someone has an estate if grandma died or you know we've got to clear this out and we had a garage sale but nobody wanted the bench that was there that grandpa made right or whatever it is um so uh, maybe there's a, a connection to heart there that says you know what we're going to repurpose this and maybe that helps folks feel a little better and clean things out oh for is sure it? we hear that all the time that people choose us because of that reason because they know grandma stuff isn't gonna go in a landfill. Or grandpa stuff is not gonna go in the landfill. But a lot of times when you think it, we're talking about grandmas and grandpas, um, the age of when you know my parents pass away, yeah. I have a household full of stuff that I don't even need. I'm already thinking, you know, I have too many items. My kids aren't gonna necessarily want them because by the time I'm old enough where I'm downsizing, they have a full house. So what do you do with all these items? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's not just- So how do you do that? Though. How do you distribute stuff to people that need it? How does that work? So there's a couple different things that we do. Um, you know, when I go in, I do a lot of the estimating as far as estates and I see what's available. Um, and I'm gonna use this as an example. I knew, you know, doing an estimate last week on Friday, there was 35 bags of clothing that were entirely like, a lot of them had like new tags on them. Wow. So in my head, I knew I'm gonna set aside some time on Monday and I'm gonna go donate those to local organizations. One of my favorite ones, I'm gonna give them a shout out, is the uh, Canasota Opportunity Shop. I know that they provide kids with back to school clothing. I know they provide clothing and items at a very reasonable, cheap price. Mm -hmm. So I also, you know, I kind of look when I'm donating things, like is it gonna cost people a lot of money to like repurchase this? Right. Because I don't want that to happen either, so I like that program. So it sounds expensive for you to come into my home and, and clean out this stuff. Is it really expensive or how can people look at it uh, economically? So as far as expense, you know, your your time is valuable, right? Yes. Your back is very va valuable, right? <laughs> well, we do this every single day. Um, so we are equipped with a great, way to remove that 40 year old freezer out of your basement mm -hmm. and we're fully insured. So that's also important when you're looking into somebody that is gonna be removing items from your house, are they insured in case they put a right. hole in your wall or something like that. Um, as far as expense, when you're renting a dumpster and you're having to fill that yourself over a weekend, you want to be fishing over the weekend, right? Yep, I do. Yeah, I do. Right? So we can load what you would load a dumpster in a weekend in about four to six yeah. hours. And maybe it doesn't go in a dumpster and that becomes a, a stressor. Well, I don't want to throw that away. So all that gets diffused. But do you yes. also take just debris? Like if there was a bunch of construction debris in somebody's garage? Yes, absolutely. You, you'll take all that. And as a matter of fact, if you need somebody to do the demo work, we'll create that, that oh, for okay. you. So we do demo. We actually have gone into houses you know, with like old lath and plaster. Yeah, yeah, and pull, tore out it all a wall out or something. To the yeah. studs so that now your builder or your contractor mm -hmm. can come in and do the finishing work. So if you want to have a conversation, um, you know, folks can reach you at 264-8472. Uh, that is correct. So uh, write that down. Maybe you just want to have a chat. It's a 264-8472-J, dog junk removal. J dog junk removal. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. And if I can quickly, if you guys, anybody would want to come out and meet myself and my husband and the J-Dog crew, we will be at the CNY Veterans Expo and Parade on November 9th from awesome. 9 to 2. Fabulous. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much, Aaron. Have a great rest of the day.